Nick Stowell from Stowell Outdoors. We're going to go over his collapsible buck saw. Don't go away. This is one of those things that I'm going to carry um, for the most part all the time now. What can you say about the saw? It's a bigger saw. It's bigger than a Baco Laplander. So what's that mean? What that means is that I can process larger amounts of wood and I can process larger wood than using a smaller saw and I'm not going to burn the calories that I would trying to use a smaller saw. In turn, that saves my energy because I can let the saw do the work versus my arms having to do more work using a smaller saw. What I liked about this saw and what actually tweaked my curiosity with it is the design of the saw and the handles itself. I thought that it was very ergonomical or, or that it would be and that's why I contacted Nick to actually try one of his saws. And as you can see here, it fits very well into the hand here and if you had to use a two-handed grip and have somebody on the other side, it works quite well. I'm not saying other saws that are designed like this. Don't take that into consideration. Don't get me wrong. There's many other saws out there. I just happen to like Nick. You know, another thing is Nick actually makes these saws one at a time in his shop. The first saw that he sent me, and I'm going to show you a picture of it. The first saw that he sent me was a little bit different than this section right here. And what he wound up doing is he actually wound up making that kind of rounded, and you'll see that in this picture. The problem that we had, or the problem that I had with the saw, is that when I tightened it up using the windlass, it actually twisted the handle. So it twisted this part of it, which kind of made it a little wonky and put a little bit of a severe angle to it. I don't think over the long run that it is going to hurt it, but I asked Nick, about it and he said that he had experienced some twisting. But this is how much of a craftsman he is. He asked me, he said, what do you think I should do? And I basically gave him my thoughts. What I told him to do is I actually just told him to make it flat. Make the mortise and tenon joint just flat so they seat up against each other and I think that that would take care of the problem. But it did take care of the problem because I believe that's how he is making them now. Um, because he hasn't said anything to the, to the likewise. So I'm glad I was to, uh, able to help him out, give him a suggestion, and he liked the suggestion and he did it. So let's, uh, let's take this out and I'll show you how to put this together. So let's take a look at the saw prior to it uh, actually being in use. As you can see here, you have the, the two handles, you have the cross piece, and you have your windlass system. Now. Uh, not unlike other collapsible buck saws, the blade is hidden and is recessed in the handles. Makes it very convenient. Uh, also closes up and makes it for a very compact saw. If you wanted to pull it completely apart, you could. However, I don't feel a need to. I can strap it to the side of my pack or put it inside. Doesn't matter. We take our system and all we do is we just fold it. Open it up, fold it down. Put it right on to our cross piece. We take our windlass system and we can make sure we keep it out of the way of the knot. And then what I like to do is I like to just start to twist like this so I get it to a certain tension where I know it's not going to fly apart and now I can handle it. We get it to the tension that we want and we set the windlass. We are now ready to go cut wood. Also right here you will notice that there are notches that have been cut into the handles. That's to keep the uh, string in place so that it doesn't flip out while we're using the saw. As we talked about here, this now sits flush 
so there is no chance of it canting to one side or the other so it stays rock, rock solid in the place there. Now if you look down the blade you will also notice that that is straight as opposed to that other picture. Nick puts a dry saw blade in there. It is a, uh, a, uh, a Baco dry blade. You can change out to go to a wet wood blade. I believe he makes the longer version as well. This one is the 24 inch range uh, of saws. So, let's go cut a little bit of wood. I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to saw a piece of wood. Just let the saw do the work. As Nick will even say in his video, you don't have to bowl this. The saw will do the work for you very easily. And there you go. And you're going to saw wood. I picked a pretty gnarly piece of wood. This has been hard. It's been laying here for a bit, but it's still pretty hard. Now, another thing that we can do, safety-wise, if our piece of wood is floating around all over the place, we go through the saw here instead of holding it here. If we go to start to rake and see the chatter, see the chatter in the teeth, well, supposing we're not paying attention, it comes up and then it rips our hand. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go right through it and continue on our way. Another tip that I found using a saw of this nature. I see people when they get longer pieces, they, uh, they either try to step on them and then they they try to saw, they try to use a plumber's vise or something of that nature with a saw that's this big. But here's a nice easy trick that you can do with a saw like this. I think you'll like it. Uh, you should give it a try. See how well it works for you. But very easily, if I want to cut this in half and I don't feel like fumbling around with it, we just turn the saw over. We embed it into the ground, we hold it, and we move the wood to the saw instead of the saw to the wood. For the money, this is one of the best saws that I have ever seen. Um, I got to play with, and uh, that's why I own two of them right now. So uh, I have elected to carry this with me uh, instead of carrying a Baco Laplander. Uh, if I want a smaller saw, I just use my Leatherman tool. Uh, but this will probably go with me all the time. Uh, it's just better to have a bigger saw for more wood. Uh, if I want to build something, construct a shelter, uh, it gives me the uh, the better option for the wood to be used. So contact Nick. I'm going to put his uh, his contact information in the description of this video. Uh, ask him about the woods that he has to offer, which ones he likes, um, which ones he prefers, I guess. Uh, ask him uh, if you want to get the dry wood blade or if you want to get the wet wood blade. doesn't really matter. I'm pretty sure that he can get both of them for you. Uh, tell him you saw this review. Uh, it's a no-nonsense review with a no-nonsense saw. Great product, highly recommended. So, uh, without further ado, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, thank you guys for your views and your comments. Until the next one, walk the woods.